in this session let us see armature reaction of a synchronous motor okay means in synchronous motor i cannot tell you how synchronous motor will start okay but once it reach to synchronous speed how torque development is going to be there i will tell you okay basically in synchronous motor starting torques will not be there okay and actually for all these only one reason will be there we will discuss in induction okay in synchronous motor starting torques will not be there in synchronous motor speed control will not be there in synchronous motor braking will not be there okay and in synchronous motor starters will not be there for example if you think of dc motor self starting okay and the speed control will be there braking will be there starters will be there if you want to vary the speed that is going to be speed control if you want to reduce the speed to zero speed that is nothing but uh, what do you say braking okay and if you think of induction motor starting torques will be there speed control will be there braking will be there starters will be there okay and the, these four will not be there in synchronous motor why means only one reason we will discuss that reason in induction motor because after induction only you will be able to means like you know uh, discuss about this or will, you will be able to understand that okay now one more thing is harmonics will be there harmonics will be there only in induction harmonics will not be discussed in synchronous this reason is also the for this also reason will be that same okay now let us think of armature reaction this is going to be motor okay let me think of a a dash with respect to a let me take b here b dash and c here c dash let me have my poles my poles will be there and this is going to be n pole s pole okay let me feel that like when it is rotating in this direction with omega okay as i told you before directly i'm taking it is going to be rotated with omega okay now means how it is getting the initial starting torque i'm not going to discuss as of now see the moment it is rotating in this direction induced voltage okay induced voltage like you know in order to what they say find out the direction of induced voltage okay we have to use right hand rule only okay now you should not think like you know it is a motor now we should use left hand rule no for induced voltage induced voltage will be there in both motor and generator as we discussed in our previous sessions for induced voltage polarity is the direction of induced voltage we have to use right hand rule only so n pole flux is in this direction and field is rotating in this direction means that with respect to field my conductor is going to rotate in opposite direction so my induced voltage here is going to be dot so induced voltage here is dot here and induced voltage here is going to be cross here and these conductors are in the middle of the pole so this is going to be maximum induced voltages maximum voltages maximum induced voltages okay now let us think of it is operating at unity power factor okay now many guys feel like you know for example if a motor is absorbing some p active power okay that particular active power has to come out for an uh, lossless conditions okay if machine is lossless under that condition whatever the power is being absorbed from the what do you say source voltage sources that particular power will be converted into output power okay now for example in motor especially in synchronous motor mo if motor is absorbing reactive power where that reactive power is going okay reactive power will not go anywhere because reactive power is not a power okay for example from a motor what is the output power for example motor is connected with brake drum and to the brake drum if i connect like you know means uh, belt if i connect the belt and if i keep on tighten the belt if i keep on tighten the belt how means my output power is being wasted in the name of friction in the belt okay so that particular friction or output power is active power only active power only now reactive power from the stator side it may take it may absorb or it may deliver because it may absorb or it may deliver reactive power which is nothing okay but why we are focusing on reactive power we are we are focusing on reactive power depending upon like you know transmission line losses for the area of cross section of acsr conductor and of course if you supply proper reactive power and all voltage profiles it can be maintained properly properly across the buses we will discuss this particular point in power systems 
okay for example my synchronous motor in the air gap the air gap my total number of flux lines required are 100 as we discussed in uh, single phase transformer analysis of synchronous motor like you know in the air gap if flux required is 100 okay now by the field winding if you are able to produce exactly 100 flux lines exactly 100 flux lines my, my stator need not take any current from the stator side either to develop the flux to produce the flux or to kill the flux okay now for example in the area of flux requirement is 100 flux lines and by your field winding if you are unable to produce that 100 for example you are producing by this field winding if you are producing 80 flux lines okay means that extra 20 flux lines has to be set up by the stator side by the stator side so it will take lagging currents or it will absorb reactive power to set up that extra flux okay for example by your field winding if you increase the field current such that flux produced by this will increase okay for example by the field winding if you are producing 120 flux lines okay means that my stator should take from the source side stator should take some currents in order to kill the flux so as we discussed uh, in our previous session also in order to set up the flux it will absorb reactive power in order to kill the flux it will deliver reactive power it will deliver reactive power okay now like you know in alternator in alternator the analysis will become easy because if i'm an alternator isolated alternator now if i'm an alternator if i'm connected with a load and if that load is inductive dominated inductive dominated i'm forced to operate at lagging such that means my load will absorb reactive power i have to deliver reactive power okay for example if i'm an isolated alternator under that conditions load connected is for example capacity dominated now I have to operate it leading. I have to operate it leading such that my capacitor will deliver reactive power and my alternator will absorb. Okay. So such a kind of analysis can be done in alternator, but not in synchronous motor. Not in synchronous motor anymore. Why in synchronous motor? In synchronous motor, like you know, I cannot say something is connected is inductive in nature, so motor will operate it lagging or motor will operate it leading. We cannot say because in the motor output power is only active power okay so in the motor output power is only active power but from input side it may take reactive power or it may supply reactive power if it take reactive power means that it is trying to set up the flux in the air gap if it is delivering reactive power it means that it is going to what they say kill the flux in the air gap just by depending upon this uh, in old gate they have given a question for two marks okay just read the question mark mark the answer that particular question immediately after this we are going to analyze okay anyway let me come to armature reaction for example if field flux produced is exactly required field uh, required flux in the air gap under that conditions my stata r will not take any reactive power or will not deliver any reactive power okay under that conditions my alternate is going to operate at unity power factor okay for example if it is operating this is going to be motor operating at unity power factor okay actually i was discussing about motor only see this is going to be current if it is operating at unity power factor the moment like you know at the pole centers pole centers voltages are going to be maximum so what about currents currents also will be maximum unity power factor one thing in our basic concept we discuss one thing that like you know whenever like you know at uh, motor in motor in generator in generator means induced voltage direction and current direction will be same but in motor current direction will be against to induced voltage against to induced voltage okay so here if this is dot this is going to be cross if this is induced voltage is cross currents are going to be dot okay now already we know that because of three time displaced currents currents okay in the windings because of three currents flowing through three space displaced windings space displaced windings one resultant mm will come that resultant mm will be aligned with the phase axis in which maximum currents flow now where maximum currents are flowing here here so maximum currents are here so this is going to be maximum currents maximum currents maximum currents okay so maximum currents in the sense complete of course all phase windings will carry currents all phase windings will carry current but resultant of all phase windings currents my resultant will be aligned with this only okay so if it is cross if it is dot if it is dot my armature mmf should be in downward direction right hand thumb roll armature mmf is going to be like this f a r where is ff 
FF is here. Okay, so FF plus FAR is going to be FR. Okay, now if you sit in the air gap, if you sit in the air gap and if you look towards the stator, towards the stator, my flux is going like this. Okay, so if my flux is going like this, means that if you are sitting in the air gap, flux is going in, in. So it should be S yes, pole. My flux flow is like this in this direction. If I sit here. Yeah, and if I sit the if I sit here in the air gap and if I see the stator, my flux is coming out of the stator, so it will become n pole. So my resultant is going to be s yes, pole here, n pole here. Okay. Now yes, n will be attracted. N yes will be attracted. So if yes resultant is here, pole is here, so it will rotate in the same direction. So torque development will be in the same direction. Okay, so in a motor, in a motor, direction of speed or direction of rotation of rotor and the torque developed is in the same direction or not? Yes, it should be. It should be. Now, did we show like you know space or space phasors or time phasors? Space phasors. Okay, because for example, if it is rotated by 120 degrees, 120 degrees, under that condition, maximum use voltage will come here. Maximum currents will come here. Under that conditions, FAR will be aligned with respect to BB dash. So, if my FF, field MMF, is rotated by some theta degrees, FAR also will be rotated by theta degrees. So, FR will be rotated by theta degrees, theta degrees. So, now stator MMF and rotor MMF are stationary with respect to each other or not, yes. Okay. So, continuous torque development is possible. Okay. Means long back, we have seen there are two conditions which has to be met for uh, continuous uh, torque development the one is number of poles of stator and rotor should be same independent of all like you know any machine any machine number of stator poles and rotor poles should be same and at the same time at the same time my stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary with respect to each other okay now so torque development and speed is in the same direction anyway we represented space now, if FAR is like this, armature MMF is like this, MMF is nothing but number of turns multiplied by current. So, number of FAR divided by number of turns is going to be current IA. IA is going to be time. Okay. Now, if IA is like this, and I said that, like, you know, uh, unity power factor, so EF is here. Okay. Now, let us think of what do you say synchronous motor at lagging power factor conditions at lagging power factor motor let me think of a a dash b b dash c c dash and let me think of my pole N1, S1 fundamental poles, this is going to be speed, okay. One thing I have to tell you, like you know, motor analysis can be done by considering voltage and reversing current or by considering current and reversing voltage, reversing voltage, okay. So in synchronous machines, I am considering voltage first and from voltage I am deriving current. And in DC machine, I will do completely in reverse direction in DC motor, in DC motor I will take current. And with respect to current, I will produce yeah, induced voltage. Induced voltage such that means one synchronous machine way and DC machine way both are clubbed. Anything like you know, you can play with any machine. Okay. Now, for example, in this case, what is the induced voltage? N pole is like this, right hand. Okay. So N pole. And my field is rotating in this direction. So induced voltage. Oh, sorry, direction of uh, rotation of the conductor and induced voltage should be dot. So, induced voltage is going to be dot here, induced voltage is going to be cross here, this is going to be maximum induced voltage. Maximum induced voltage. Okay. For example, this is motor operating at lagging. Okay. As I told you before, the moment you like, you know, I say lagging means that particular reactor power, for example, it lagged in a sense, my reactor power is being absorbed by the motor. Where that is going means it will not come to output. It will not come to output because output is only active power. Okay. For example, in this case, if current is lagging behind, lagging behind, then what will happen? For example, this is the voltage. This is voltage. 
and my current should lag behind by voltage. My current by theta. So if I have maximum induced voltage and maximum current, maximum current, like you know, you have to wait for theta. Okay. Now see here, as of now the pole is here. As of now, the pole is here. Now, for example, if I have maximum induced voltage here, maximum induced voltage here, after maximum induced voltage, you have to wait for theta time in order to have maximum currents here. As of now, maximum voltage here, you have to wait for theta time or not in order to have maximum currents, yes. So, by that time, what will happen? As of now, maximum induced voltage in A, after some time, maximum currents will come. After some time, my rotor might have rotated here. Okay, means that when my rotor is here, maximum current will be here. If my rotor is here, maximum current will be here. Okay, so my maximum current will be here and here. This one the maximum current. Maximum current. Okay, now means as of now, induced voltage is dot. So current should be cross. Current should be done. Now, what about my armature MMF? Cross here, dot here. Cross here, dot here. So, armature MMF is going to be in this direction. Okay. So, armature MMF is F A R. Armature MMF. So, cross here, dot here. Armature MMF is like this. Current. And my field MMF is going to be as usual. Say MFF. Because my flux is coming out. Field flux. Now, what is where is my result in? Resultant is going to be here. This is going to be FR. Again, if you sit in the air gap and see into the stator, my step flux is entering into the stator. So, flux should enter into S pole. Here, this is going to be north pole of resultant. Resultant because of field and armature combinedly. So, if you see here, N pole is here, S pole is here, attraction will be there. Yes, pole is there, N pole is there, attraction will be in this direction. So, torque developed also will be in the same direction. In the same direction. Okay. Now, see, torque developed and uh, direction of rotation should be in the same direction. Then only output, like you know, we will be able to absorb mechanical power. Okay. Now, means did we show space or time? Only space because this is going to rotate, this is going to rotate, this is going to rotate. Okay, now let us think of time. If MMF is like this, MMF divided by number of turns is going to be current. So IA is going to be here. IA is going to be here. And it is operating at lagging. So IA should lag behind voltage. So voltage is going to be here. Voltage is going to be here. Okay, now let us think of motor at leading. Okay, so same A, A dash, B, B dash, and C, C dash. Okay, rotor. Actually, one thing I have to tell you, don't think that you have to remember all this, not at all required from transformer, already we derived the, all the conclusions. Those conclusions, again in the next video, we are going to connect the transformer with whatever we discussed in the armature reaction. After that, we are not going to think about this armature reaction at all in solving the problems. Okay, so this is going to be Okay, my field MMF Field MMF Maximum induced voltages. Maximum induced voltages. Okay. So this is going to be, I am saying, motor at leading. Motor at leading. Okay. So here, leading means that if I think of voltage current relations, like you know, voltage is going to be this. Okay. My current is going to be leading current okay so if i think of voltage maximum is here current maximum already left behind okay so as of now rotor pole is here maximum voltage are here maximum voltage are here but what about maximum currents maximum currents are already passed by by theta degrees okay so as of now voltage is maximum already currents are maximum passed so when my rotor is here maximum currents would have passed here 
so when rotor is here maximum current will come to here okay so make this is going to be maximum current max current okay so in this like you know it is going to be dot induced voltage is dot means that this is going to be cross current and here current is going to be dot okay now right hand thumb roll right hand thumb roll currents are flowing like this so my mmf should be in this direction so armature mmf is this okay field mmf plus armature mmf is going to be my resultant mmf resultant mmf this is going to be south pole this is going to be north pole of resultant north and south will attract so torque developed will be in the same direction torque developed will be in the same direction that's it okay again like you know let us include time also voltages currents and all see fr armature mmf armature current armature current should lead means that f okay so means phase diagram is over now you need not remember anything you need not remember anything like you know from transformer in the next video i'm going to connect everything okay in the next video you will understand whatever we discussed here need not be analyzed need not be remembered it's like you know we need not uh, analyze this at all for gate exam for gate exam okay just let me link this with previous thing but one thing let me add here that is like you know torque angle torque angle for example if you see my resultant mmf is leading field mmf okay my res because rotation is in this direction with respect to this it is leading okay actually leading lagging concepts also i thought of uh, dealing in the phasor diagrams and all but like you know it is meant for gate 2020 let me be in this way and in the detailed course very soon it's going to be launched in that detailed course i will explain each and everything okay so with respect to this it is leading okay so here also with respect to field it is leading or not yes yes so let us think of as uh, we discussed previously this is going to be yes pole for example resultant it is not stator it is actually if you think of stator it will be different means if you think of for example stator mmf is here okay uh, rotor mmf is here and resultant mmf okay basically means in power systems like you know few people say that the angle between stator mmf and rotor mmf is uh, like uh, delta torque angle which is wrong actually okay the angle between means rotor mmf and resultant mmf resultant mmf should be torque angle delta because torque will be developed because of that okay but in power systems like you know many guys say why angle between stator mmf and rotor mmf is delta because if you think of here stator mmf is here fr armature mmf rotor mmf is here what is the angle between that 90 is it called as like you know load angle no torque angle no okay now let me tell you this is going to be resultant s pole s yes, pole resultant it is not stator it is resultant pole and this is going to be rotor rotor field pole this is going to be n this is going to be s see and few guys like you know they will tell magnetic locking magnetic locking magnetic locking term is also like you know we should not use that because magnetic locking will be there in all the machines in all the machines okay in all rotating machines okay anyway this is going to be s yes, pole this is going to be s yes, pole this is going to be n pole if both are rotating like this if both are rotating like this we cannot say whether it is a motor or generator but for example if both are rotating in the same direction but if it is a head okay field pole is ahead resultant pole is lagging behind then what will both are rotating in this direction then what will happen this is n pole this is s pole attraction will be in this direction attraction will be in backward okay but if you are yeah, though torque is in backward direction but if you are able to rotate in the same direction means that prime mover is keeping ahead prime mover is keeping ahead okay so prime mover is keeping ahead this is going to be uh, resultant and prime mover is not allowing it they are not allowing my rotor pole to go back okay so prime mover is pushing so torque is backward torque is going backward but your prime mover is pushing ahead okay so mechanical power will be absorbed alternator alternator so if my field pole is leading resultant resultant it's going to be alternator for example it is like this both are rotating in the same direction now for example for this if you connect brake drum 
and if you keep on tight the brake drum tighten the brake drum okay so you are trying to stop the rotor means that it is a motor for example it is like this now it is going like this it is going like this okay then what will happen this is going to be s pole this is going to be n pole the attraction will be in this direction the attraction will be in this direction and it is rotating in the same direction same direction means that torque and the direction of rotation is same it's a motor it's a motor so conclusion is very simple if my field pole is leading resultant okay alternator torque will be backward rotation will be forward and if my field pole is lagging behind resultant that is going to be motor this is final okay so see here resultant is leading field pole is lagging behind resultant is leading field pole is lagging behind resultant is leading field pole is lagging behind lagging behind so means conclusion is very simple very very simple in alternator field pole should be leading in motor field pole should be lagging okay in the next session we'll discuss again